What is going on guys? Welcome back. In today's video, we're going to learn how to automatically visualize data sets with the proper plot types and chart types using just a single line of code in Python. So let us get right into it. All right, so we're going to learn how to automatically visualize data sets in Python today, and we're going to do that in a single line of code. Now, when I say we're going to do that in a single line of code, what I mean is that we're going to do the visualization step in a single line of code. So we're going to have one line of code that visualizes our data set automatically. It produces multiple plots and graphs of different plot types uh, to automatically visualize our data set. But we're still going to need some extra lines to load the data and to prepare the data and so on. But the actual visualization step will be one line of code. And for that, we're going to need an external library called AutoVis. This is going to be the core library of today's video. This is going to do the automatic visualization. And in addition to that, we're also going to install Pandas, Scikit-Learn and Seaborn. Those libraries are only going to be used to get some data sets and to uh, feed them into AutoVis. So you don't have to install those if you have already a CSV file, for example, your data set that you want to use. Uh, but the AutoVis is what we're going to use. The AutoVis library is what we're going to use in today's video. So the first thing is we're going to open up a command line and we're going to type pip install autovis like this. In my case, this is already installed. And then we're also going to install now pip install sklearn only for the data sets. We're not going to do machine learning only for the data sets. Also Seaborn only for the data sets and uh, pandas in order to be able to combine uh, columns into data sets and so on. Um, now, before we get into the code, one more thing to, to mention here, you should use a Jupyter notebook in today's video. Usually I say I'm going to use one and you can use whatever you want, but AutoVis is actually uh, programmed and developed for IPython notebooks. So make sure you use an IPython notebook for today's video. If you don't know what Jupyter notebooks are and how they work, I have videos on my channel about this. I have a Jupyter notebook tutorial and also uh, a Jupyter lab tutorial where I show you how you can work with these things. So make sure you have um, a Jupyter notebook or an IPython notebook that you're working at. So the first thing to want to do is we want to uh, we want to import from scikit-learn a data set by saying from sklearn dot data set, a uh, data sets plural import, and we're going to go with the iris data set. So the load underscore iris data set, which is just a function that loads this uh, flower type data set. And we can say here now data equals load iris like this. And then if I run this and I show data, you can see that we have here the data key with uh, the values. And then we have also uh, the target, which has the target class uh, classes, basically the labels. And then we have the target names. Those are the classes that we can have. And we should somewhere have the feature names as well. But those are not going to be too relevant here. We, we don't really care about the actual data. We just want to see how we can automatically visualize the data. And what we're going to do now is we're going to say here, import NumPy. Oh, by the way, NumPy has to be imported as well. So just for the sake of completeness, you go here, pip install NumPy. But if you install pandas, you should have NumPy installed already. So import numpy SNP. And then we're going to say here full underscore data is equal to NP append data data. So we get these features here and also data dot target. And we're going to reshape the targets here to be negative one one. So we, we basically flip them so that they um, can be appended to the data. And the axis on which this is going to happen is the axis one. So we're going to do this column wise. And then we have here the features and the class uh, in one in one array here. And now what we can do is we can say import pandas as PD. And we can say that the data frame is just a pandas data frame um, of the data. And then we're going to say that DF columns are going to be data feature names. Plus, and here we're going to say type or class, whatever you want to call it. And 
now you can see what this data frame looks like. Now, all this is just preparation. This is not visualization. So if you have this done already, if you already have a CSV file, you don't need to do all this. This is just taking a scikit-learn data set and turning it into a simple pandas data frame, which we have here now. We have the four features and we have the type, the class, so to say. And what we need to do now in order to be able to use that with AutoVis is we need to export it to a CSV file. So to CSV, and let's call this now uh, iris.csv, whatever. And now we have the CSV file here, as you can see. And all we need to do now for the actual visualization is we need to import from AutoVis dot auto this underscore class import auto this Where's the auto completion? Come on, auto this underscore class. Um, and then we're going to say here, a matplotlib uh, inline, which basically tells the notebook to display the plots in line here. Uh, and then we're going to say here, AV equals auto this class. And now the actual visualization step is just one function call. It's this equals and then AV dot auto this like that. And here we specify now the file name iris.csv in this case. And the separator is by default a comma. So that is that. Now this is still a single line of code, if I write it like this. So I didn't lie to you. There it is the single line of code for the visualization. And if I now run this here, uh, this will create all sorts of plots of the data set, you can see features plotted against each other, you can see how um, if, if there's a correlation or something like that, you have box plots, you have distribution plots, you have uh, probability plots, all that. Um, we have violin plots, we have this heat map here. So this correlation uh, heat map, uh, I think it's a correlation heat map, right? I'm not sure. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, because we have the ones here in the diagonal. Uh, but as you can see, we didn't do anything special here, we just passed the data frame. And now we have a full visualization of everything that we could uh, simply compare here. Now, of course, we can do some more complicated plots as well. But we have box plots, distribution plots, features plotted against each other, very, very easy to create these visualizations with just a single line of code uh, of code. And now we can go ahead and also specify some more parameters. So what I can do here, for example, is um, let's maybe go ahead and copy this here. I can now go ahead and add some parameters. So I can say, for example, that I want to use, um, I don't know, a chart format, I want to have the chart format, HTML. So I want to have it exported as HTML instead of plotted um, in line. And then I can say, for example, uh, if I want to, I can say max rows analyzed. So I can say max row analyzed is 200, for example. So I can limit the amount of rows that we use for the visualization, the same can be done with columns. Now I'm not going to do this here now, because uh, there's no purpose, there, there's no reason to do that here. But you can do something like max rows analyzed max calls analyzed, and you can limit the amount of columns and rows to look at when it does the visualization, then it focuses on just a few rows that are important. Um, and let's just run this now as an HTML here. And what happens is, it doesn't show me the visualization here, I have now this directory here. And I have the individual HTML file. So I can open this one, for example, I can say I trust it. And um, does it work? Come on. Let's open another one. I think this is just uh, Jupyter lab not opening the respective file. So let's uh, actually I'm going to open a command line, I'm going to navigate to my pi directory, I'm going to go to the current that I'm working in, I'm going to say explore. Uh, and then I'm going to go here, there you go, heat maps. And now I can see we have an interactive heat map here, right. And I can do the same thing for um, distribution plots here, I can look at the distribution plot. I can look at the scatter plot. So I can plot, for example, the width against the width, this is just a line. Um, and then I can choose all these settings here. You can see I didn't do anything actually that required any thinking or any brain power, I just said visualize the data set, and then it created uh, interactive HTML files, or uh, it created um, inline plots, I think we have a bunch of more settings, for example, I think I should be able to say server, then it opens them immediately here in the browser. 
Um, this is also something that works. And of course, I can also say uh, PNG JPEG or something like that. So I can say PNG um, and then they're plotted, I think, in line. And if I set now, uh, I'm not sure if it does it already. No, it doesn't save the images. If I say here, though, keyword verbose equals uh, two, like that. Let me just zoom in so that you can see it. Verbose two, if I say that, it should also save the images um, as images here. So you can see we have an image with the plots. We have a heat map, we have uh, the pair, oh, this is actually the HTML file. Uh, we have the violin plots and all that. So this is also something that you can do here. And this works with different data sets. Now, one thing that I want to show you here is how crazy this can get with uh, another data set. So what we can do, for example, is we can say import Seaborn S SNS, and then I can say data equals SNS load data set, and then I can load the Titanic data set. I think this was the one that produced a lot of plots. So I can say now data dot to CSV immediately because this if we look at it, this is already a pandas data frame. So I can say to CSV Titanic dot CSV. Um, and then essentially, if I take the code that I have here, and I change just the file name Titanic, and let's say I want to keep the default format. So I'm just going to do it like this here. Uh, I'm not even sure if this is going to happen fast enough. Um, was this actually the crazy data set? I'm not sure. But you can see that we now have also bar plots for the average values here. Uh, I think the crazy data set was actually a different one. Let me see if it was the breast cancer data set. But you can see that we have different plot types depending on the data it finds. So now let's see from sklearn dot data sets import load uh, breast cancer and then we should be able to just let me collapse these cells here so that we can actually scroll through the code. Uh, I should be able to do the same thing essentially. So full data equals whatever it is. Um, so data equals load breast cancer. Then we have the full data, whatever it is. And then we have this here. So we say make a, a pandas data frame out of it, then uh, we can say classification because the classification is malignant or benign. And then we're going to export this df to CSV cancer dot CSV. Uh, what was the problem here? I think the problem here was that um, the problem was I, I think that it had a different type, which which line was this plus classification. So I think this here has to be turned into a list, right? There you go. Okay. So DF is this year, and we already exported it to CSV. So if I now go ahead and do this. Come on, let me just remove the C here. And if I change this now to cancer CSV, this should produce a lot of plots because we have a lot of different variables. And it also exceeds the limit taking the top 30 variables, you can see it's still loading, nothing happens. Um, this produces a crazy amount of plots. So depending on the data set, you will see a lot of graphs, you can again, as I said, limit with the max rows, max columns analyzed, I'm not even sure um, how long this will take, this might take uh, quite some long time. Uh, but yeah, this is a nice way to just go ahead and say, I have a data set, I don't want to explore it, I don't want to call the info function, the describe function, look at it, look at the documentation, just feed it into the auto -vis and see what happens, see what features you have, see what distributions you have, you don't really have to think at all about the data, you just throw it in there and see what happens. Maybe you want to limit um, the columns or the rows. Now we have the plots here. You can see a lot of different plots, uh, a lot of features plotted against each other. And then if I scroll down more, um, oh, this this <laughs> quite a lot of plots as you can see here. But if I go down even further, oh my god, this is huge. Here you also have box plots and distribution plots. Uh, yeah, here it makes sense to just limit it, you have also a huge heat map. But here it makes sense maybe to limit it, we can actually try out the command. Uh, I think we should be able to limit here by saying max calls analyzed 
equals two, for example, then we only have two columns analyzed here, the two, I think, more, most important columns here, uh, taking top two variables. Uh, I can also go with five, and then we don't have so many plots. But yeah, this is how you can limit that. You can also limit the rows. But I think this is a nice way to automatically visualize data sets in Python. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.